When I first got this computer, it was running Windows 11, which I had pre-installed on there. But I decided to do a fresh installation of Windows 10 instead. The installation went well, and it recognized the product key. However, when I connected to the internet, it no longer accepted the product key. Even when I tried to get the key from the command prompt, it still wouldn't accept it. You know what? Forget Windows. I'm gonna try something else. So I've tried several different distros in Linux in the past, but I decided that I'm going to try Android and see how that will work on this PC. So I downloaded BlissOS, which has a version that runs on Android 16, and I formatted it to a USB drive using Rufus. I went through the installation process, which ended up being quite difficult compared to Windows or Linux. Once it was installed, I needed to set which dock I wanted. Before I start experimenting with the OS, I'm going to do a quick little restoration. So feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to see that. Taking a closer look at the device, it doesn't look too terrible. Just a few scuffs and scratches. Earlier, I thought that the bezel was sticking because of the rubber, but it turns out it was magnets. The bottom case was missing all of its screws, as well as the rubber pads. Removing the cover, I could see that there was no battery and no caddy for the SSD. The first thing I do is clean the bottom cover with a dash of rubbing alcohol, while also removing some of the old adhesive left behind by the rubber strips. The next thing I did was remove the fan and heatsink so that I could redo the thermal paste. I could see that someone did quite a messy job, and also had applied thermal paste to the platform controller hub, which according to Dell's website is not supposed to have thermal paste on it. I began cleaning this mess up by using cotton swabs soaked in 91% isopropyl alcohol. I ended up using a few cotton swabs, and I used my tiny blue vacuum to remove some of the chunks. I also cleaned the heat sink as well. Now that I was done with that, I put the fan back and applied thermal paste by spreading it on and adding one dot in the middle. I was about to install the heatsink when I realized that the heatsink was supposed to go on before the fan, so I removed one of the screws and finagled it underneath. I applied pressure to the heatsink and screwed it in. Then I screwed the fan back down as well. I noticed that there is a slight gap between the fan assembly and the heatsink. It was like this originally from the factory, but I disagree with this. So I got some acetate cloth electrical tape and applied it to cover the gap. In the mail, I got some parts that I ordered. I have a hard drive caddy and a new battery. I noticed that the manual abbreviates please at the beginning. That seems like a good sign of a high quality battery manufacturer. They even thought about repairability since you can look inside by peeling back the sticker. It's probably fine, it's, it'll be alright, it's fine, it's fine. So next I screwed in the hard drive caddy and screwed in the SSD. Then I also screwed in the battery as well. A quick test shows that the battery is working and the OS boots up. After that, I put in the bottom panel and I used thread locker on all the new screws. It won't prevent the screws from being removed if I want them to be, but it will prevent them from getting loose on their own. One final wipe down at the bottom, and some more cleaning to the rest of the device, and this computer is looking quite nice. The bottom of the device is still missing some rubber bits, and without this, the exhaust is right up against the desk which would not be great for cooling. I do plan to add some rubber bits on later, but for now I'll just use these beer caps to prop up the back so that I can get decent cooling. Now that the device is all situated, I'll be testing out this OS. For starters, YouTube runs alright, but the video will default to 480p. 
but when I change the quality to 1080p, it seems to work alright. Next, I run Angry Birds 2. For the most part, it runs alright, but it does stutter every now and then. The next game I run is PUBG Mobile, or I try to run it, but it never actually loads on this device. I try World of Tanks next, and that runs perfectly smooth without any issues. I was even able to win a match. The next app I try is Prisma. When I expanded the screen, it puts the image sideways and cuts the video output, while the touchscreen also stopped responding. I ended up having to restart the device. Now that that's back, I try Plants vs Zombies. This app works very smooth without any issues. Hill Climb Racing and Jetpack Joyride also work very smoothly on this machine. As for running Android on x86 processors, it's a bit of a hit and miss. Some things work really well, and other things don't work very well. Android isn't really made to run on x86 processors, so I expected that there might be a few issues. As for whether it's worth it or not, I would say for most people it isn't. For me, it was worth it because it was fun. But for most people, it would be easier to just get an Android device or use Chrome OS instead. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day. Yes. <laughs>